Hello, it's Callum Knott here and I'm doing another very quick Godot tutorial. Uh, this time how to make a very simple plugin. I'm actually working on a more complicated uh, tutorial for this at the moment, but I thought this would be a good way to start. Um, so I'm going to start actually not by looking at the plugin configuration files, but just by making a, a very simple shell to show you how this is going to work. Uh, so let me just start by firing off Godot. Um, I'm opening up, I've got two builds of Godot, you'll have seen there, Godot and Godot Tutorial, and that's really just so I can have two instances running at once. Uh, it's kind of useful sometimes, because I'm on a Mac. Um, so we're going to start by making a new project, and I'm going to be really lazy, and I'm going to put it in a temporary file system that I have right in my root directory, because I'm on a Mac, and it's easy. So we'll just call, call this plugin toot, that'll do. And we'll call this plugin toot. Like that. There we go. And we're just going to switch into edit mode. So for this plugin, what we're going to use is we're going to start by making an incredibly simple GUI, somewhat similar to uh, what you can see here. So we're going to start with a very simple, uh, let's start with a window dialog. That's fine. And we're going to make that about that size, just to kind of pop up like that. And then we can add some stuff to it. So let's just add, uh, let's add a label. Let's make it say, hello world. And uh, because it's parented, so it moves when I move that little window around. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit. That might help uh, somewhat. Label. Ah, move. Perfect. So there we go. Really simple, not doing any kind of hooks yet, just just a very simple label. So that's fine, that's all we need, and we can choose, not export, sorry, we can choose save scene as, and I'm going to save it as an XML, so I'm going to save this as popup.xml, pop save, done. That's all we need, we can actually quit go.now, we do not need anything else. So if we head back in here, um, so the plugin directory is actually hidden. Uh, it's under my root folder. You can see Callum K here, uh, and we can see here I've got a root folder called .godot. It's a hidden folder, and inside there there is a plugins folder, and this is where the plugins go for Godot. Now, depending on what version of Godot you originally installed, this file structure may or may not exist. You might have to create it. Um, the reason I found out that this was where it was because it didn't seem to be in any documentation. Um, if you actually launch Godot from the command line, so you can do that by, uh, if you're on a Mac, going into here, and then if we launch it like that from the command line, you will see that it gives you some kind of stuff, and you can see, here we go, listing on that directory there. So that's how I knew that's where it was. Um, that's not that interesting, so we can kill that for the moment, but anyway. Once you know that that's where it is, it's fairly simple to put plugins in and create new ones. So we can go to plugins, and I've just made this very, uh, well, that's really, let's start again, let's make a new one. We'll make a new folder, and we will call it uh, plugin toot, like that. And the time plugin, here we go, that one here, uh, I believe you can download it, or you can find it in the source code in the wiki if you need to find it again. Um, it is available, I'll show you where to download that. Uh, let's do that now, actually. If we go to GitHub, hopefully Studio's wiki, um, not the wiki, sorry, the main distro, and then you look through all the different things, you can find it on the modules, GD script, nope, you can't, they moved it, that used to be where it is, that's not where it is anymore, uh, I think it might be under tools, script plugins, time, there we go, so this is a very good kind of sample one that we're going to use. So we're going to copy those two files, very easy, we'll put it into plugin shoot like that. And I'm going to name the time one plugin toot.gd and this is plugin.cfg that has to stay the same. So we're going to open both of those up in Sublime Text, just a text editor that I like to use. So the plugin.cfg is a description file, so we can name this plugin toot. There's a description here. Interestingly, the description includes a line break. No idea why it does that, because the line breaks don't actually format correctly. But, hey-ho, that's how it works. We'll call this a cool plugin shoot by Callum K. Author, 
also Callum. Not version 1.0, it doesn't install, it runs in live time, and the script we changed the name to plugin gd Perfect. Now inside plugin gd we have we want to declare as a tool because we say it's being used inside the editor. We say extends the editor plugin, and then we have some stuff that does some other stuff. Really, we don't need any of this. I'm going to get rid of the exit scene. Don't really want that. I'm going to get rid of a lot of the timer stuff inside a knit. Uh, can get rid of actually get name can stay for various reasons, and we can get rid of these as well. We don't really need any of them. Perfect. So we have here something very simple. We have actually, you know what? I deleted something. I probably shouldn't. Let's just leave that how it is and get rid of this stuff here. Again, I apologise, I do waffle a fair bit when I make these tutorials uh, because I don't really think about them before I do them, but hopefully it's enough to show you what does what. Um, the plugin, that's not really used. So what we have here is enter scene. This is what runs after the plugin has been loaded, init is what happens as the plugin is loaded, and exit scene is what happens when someone closes the plugin. If you decide to disable the plugin, then exit scene runs. That's why I wanted to leave it here with this label free, label null thing. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to do label equals label new, and also we can do label dot set because uh, it, of course it's GD script, so we can use the same syntax we've been using before. Hello world, like that, fair enough. Add a custom control. Now this is kind of interesting. This is basically, as far as I can work out, how you assign things to the actual editor in GD script in Godot. What it seems to do is, depending on what you put here for container toolbar, that decides where you are going to put something. Now, I should point out, this is incredibly, incredibly flimsy, as far as I can work out in the main code. Container toolbar exists, there are about four others, but those four others are very inconsistent. Um, to just kind of give you a little example, if I load up the Godot file again, and we just edit this. So, container toolbar, this one we have here, container toolbar, allows you to put stuff up here. You can see I'm working on an asset store at the moment, um, which is going to be able to install and download assets for you, kind of 3D files, scripts, things like that. I thought that would be useful. The container toolbar adds something up here. There is another option for adding something here, but that only works in 3D view. You can't put anything here in 2D view, only in 3D view. There is also an option to write up here, um, but again, doesn't seem to be any options for putting anything over here or really modifying anything else. So I can't quite work out whether or not that's fully implemented or kind of half broken, not really sure. Um, but anyway, we, we've written this now. We've re oh, go away. Uh, we've written this very simple plugin now so I can show you how it works. You go to settings, editor settings, plugins, and you can now see uh, plugin toot is here. That's the one we wrote. And if I enable it, Hello World has popped up over here. I can close it, open it, close it, open it. And you can see that the Hello World disappears when I shut it uh, because I've got this remove function written over here, label free, label equals null. Um, and that's why it disappears. Technically, the label is still there, but it's just kind of blanked out. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and we can refresh plugins as well, which means if I say Hello World 2 over here, refresh the plugin, and then bring it back in, you can see Hello World 2 has updated there. So it's quite nice in terms of dynamically uh, creating things. So that's kind of pretty cool. But uh, as you saw with my asset store, what I've got is another window opening up. Um, I apologise it's the wrong size, it's kind of meant to be smaller and it's meant to kind of sit in the middle of your screen. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll get that simple pop-up to work and I'll show you how that works. So if I just close this for a moment, I don't really need this open. And I head back to my file structure, and I'm just going to drag a couple of things around. So remember, uh, from my OSX temp directory, we started this uh, plugin toot. Here we go. 
and that we made the popup.xml. That was the scene with the little pop-up in it. So I'm just going to grab that, copy it, and I'm going to go and put it back into my go.file structure. Here we go, plugins, and there we go. I've late sent in that popup.xml. So where's this? Here we go. Just going to drag this in to remember how I did it. Um, sorry, this is all my assets or code, which I am still still working on. There you go. That's it. Two lines of code. Very simple. Should have really remembered that. So what we can do is we can say bar s equals preload, not asset store, but uh, I think we call it pop up dot xml at child s dot instance. That should be all we need. So if we load up GoDot again, it should have dynamically loaded this for us. And go into edit mode, settings, editor settings, plugins, turn on plugin, toot, and we can see that hello world pop-up has showed up. Um, not really much use because I mean we have disable and it kind of pops up again and we can kind of keep doing that. But really what we want is a button, uh, and that's why I've got this here, this open asset store uh, button up there like that. So to do that, all we're going to do is change this label into a button. So we're going to say button equals button new, button set text, click me, and add that to, there we go. Now I should point out, actually I can't work out how to remove the button, button free, button equals null doesn't seem to do what I think it does, so at this point I'm going to remove it, that, um, because it, it doesn't seem to particularly do anything at all. But we are going to move this and we're going to put this to a new funk called clicked button. There we go. And then all we need to do is get the um, ba, 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 there we go, that's what I want, that piece of text. Button connect pressed to uh, there we go, click button. And we can remove the argument as well. That should really be everything. Uh, if we go back in, we are going to have to quit Godot for this to make a change, I think. Possibly not, but no harm done in doing it anyway. Edit. And then we should be able to do settings, editor settings, plugins. We should be able to... Oh, it hasn't done it. Nothing's there. Intriguing. Okay, well, let's turn them off, close it. Quit out of Godot and see if I made any particular errors. Again, this is actually uh, kind of a nice thing that we can do now because it just shows you a good way of debugging in Godot. Um, if we open up our Godot build like this and we run from the command line, Then when we try and enable a plugin, if something isn't working, which clearly isn't in this case, we should be able to see in the terminal there. So here we go, I've got my terminal up, and as I enable plugin to it, invalid call, invalid function, new in base, nil. Invalid function, new in base, nil. Wonder what that could be meaning. Hello guys, sorry about that, um, if the video cut out, just couldn't work out what the problem was there. Um, you can see that in my editor I was having a little issue here, uh, it was saying invalid call existing function new in base nil. It's of course because over here where I'd said button.new, what I needed to do was address it with a capital letter. Um, my fault, should have checked that really. But anyway, that update is done. In Godot we can see if I turn off the plugin, refresh the plugin and then load again, Ta-da! We have a little click me button up the top there. And if I click it, we get a pop-up that says, Hello World. And close it, click again, close it, click again, and it goes on and on and on. So that's the end of this super quick tutorial. Um, hopefully it will get you started on at least how to set up plugins, because that was a nightmare for me to even work out, and how to build simple GUIs for them as well. The only thing I haven't quite worked out yet is how to address back into the editor from within these plugins. 
um, how to address different bits or update parts of code or move things around, that kind of thing. Still slightly uncertain about. And like I said, I am working on a editor at the moment, well, an asset store at the moment. Um, you can see the scripts are not loading correctly, uh, the resolutions yet. But essentially this gives you a really nice list of, of, of what's available to download and install. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will come out with a new tutorial soon, uh, hopefully showing you the brand new asset store I've been creating uh, so that people can upload and share scripts and do all sorts of kind of cool things like that, possibly share models and uh, artwork as well. So hopefully this uh, has been useful for someone. Thanks a lot.